Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 64 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. And this is another message from Team Invisible, which has been recurrent. And it is separate your money from work or separate your money from what you do. And this isn't a new concept. My human design teacher has been, uh, who's Karen Curry Parker, has been talking about us changing from a currency of effort being paid for what we do to a currency of well being, attracting money in direct proportion to how healthy we are, how, how much attention we're paying to our well being. Um, I've been getting the message that to let go of old ways of thinking and old ways of trying to generate an income in the world. And, and I keep saying, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) It's taken weeks to see that underlying a lot of effort is an income. We all have to have an income to survive. And, That includes coaches and teachers and people who don't work in the banking industry or politics. Um, We do have to make money at this point in our world. We do still have to make a house payment and they won't take a basket of chickens yet. (laughs) But that's not the, 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 those are the outward details. But the inner shift that's being called for is the shift in your energy from focusing on how do I make money with my job or my course, or how do I get a raise or what can I sell or what kind of business, how many oils can I sell? How much Norwex can I sell? You know, it's shifting from those kinds of statements going on in your system to how can I get more sleep? How can I eat cleaner? How can I eat less? For a lot of us, it's eating less food. Our bodies really don't need nearly as much food as we give them. Um, <clears throat> we're encouraged to overeat. I mean, upsize everything, right? Why get a reasonable amount of food for your stomach when you can pay 50 cents more and get enough to feed, uh, you know, a table full of truck drivers. So, you know, because it's logical, right? (laughs) Never mind that we're treating our bodies like garbage cans because we don't want to throw the food in the garbage can. So instead we'll throw it in our stomach because that also, yeah, there's some mad logic going on there. So the other day I was sharing with my um, 10 Minutes to More Money group, which is a group on Voxer that you can join through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. It's a daily one command for wealth, something about money. Lately, I've been switching it up on them and and doing just educational pieces and stuff. So I don't know if I'm going to get flagged for that, but um, it is something about money every day. And when I was talking to them about this just a few days ago, I was saying that the image I keep seeing is um, money on one side and us on the other side, humanity on the other side. And then there's a like this big giant cartoon size meat cleaver comes down and cuts the cord between the two, between humanity and dollar bills and gold coins and, and things like that. And I was like, well, that's great. Um, from an evolutionary perspective, but you know, again, we can't pay the rent with a basket of chickens. So what are we supposed to do for today? And it was like, you can't, the answer was to shift the energy now to shift the way we think now we can do that. Uh, you know, we can't all raise goats and make our own cheese and all those sorts of things. But what we can do is start to break those bonds. And side note, if you study human design and you have a five in your profile line, 
Um, you are a bond breaker. You are the heretic that says the emperor is wearing no clothes or the money system's breaking down. Everybody do something different quick <laughs> before it runs out. Um, so yeah, so we do still have to make money and we do have still have to, uh, you know, welcome money into our, our lives any way it will come. But that's another aspect of it is to change the energy and then to stop trying to make it come through predictable channels. So shifting from I have to sell X number of spots in my course to make X number of dollars in order to pay the bills for three months or, you know, whatever it is you're trying to generate, <clears throat> or I have to sell seven cars to make enough, you know, it's effort, efforting. I have to put out a physical action in order to have money to support my physical existence on the planet. Shifting that to I have to feel as good as I can while I'm selling seven cars or 15 spots in a workshop or whatever, you know, like it's not that you stop taking those actions, but you take them in a completely different vibration, a completely different state of energy, emotional state of being while you're taking the actions. <clears throat> and the actions may change, right? So when we get in alignment, sometimes the action is go take a nap or take up wooden spoon carving, which is what I did recently, or go on a baking binge, another thing I did recently um, that really loosened up a lot for me. When on the surface, it's like, why am I interested in carving wooden spoons? Why? I certainly don't need to be baking a bunch of damn cookies. <laughs> but putting, I follow the energy I've learned to trust and putting my energy in those areas opened up things in other areas. Soul communications, your body's messages aren't like a telegram that says, Hey, go bake a bunch of cookies and you'll get more attention on your Facebook posts. Although that's exactly what happened. Um, or go carve spoons and you'll get a, an idea for the, your biggest course offering ever, which is exactly what happened. <clears throat> okay. It doesn't come like that. It just says, Hey, go carve a spoon out of wood with a knife. <laughs> Even worse, it was like, hey, go drive to Atlanta, park in horrible downtown, take a class, which the class was fun, but then spend three hours getting home. And so you can carve some wood with various types of sharp objects, right? It's like, um, logic says I need to stay at home and continue banging my head on how to be a better copywriter. But that's not how this works. That is the shift is doing what you are told. Team Invisible generally does not tell you what to do. It's a gentle nudge. It's a small whisper. It's a flicker of sudden interest in something that you haven't been interested in before. And it will be directly related, looking back, it will always be directly related to what you were just groaning and whining about. How do I get more clients? How do I get more students? How can I get a raise? Er, 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 er. <laughs> Go carve wooden spoons. Um, okay, just do it. Just follow it and then watch what happens. And then the thing you were whining about either resolves itself or you're presented with, um, you're presented with the next step and the next step or the right words. The other day, I'm getting better about this. I'm taking those two classes from Steph Lagana and Patty Lennon. I'm getting better about all day, every day asking Team Invisible to help me because my little old pea brain, it don't work too well when it comes to marketing. It just, ugh, man, it's just a struggle. So the other day I was like, what words do I need to use? I have a very hard time. I know what results people get when they work with me. 
but I don't know how to express that to people who haven't worked with me. So it's like a weird catch 22. (laughs) If you work with me, your life is going to change. But to get you to work with me, I have to tell you how your life is going to change. And it's very, very difficult. I honestly, I'm surprised I've had as many clients as I've had for my inability to, you know, find the right words. But I was flipping open an um, Oracle card deck called the Way of the Horse. And I pulled a card and I was like, well, that doesn't seem to really apply. And it, it you know, it just was like, oh, this is kind of weird. Maybe I didn't ask my question correctly. But the next page, so it was like card number 10, and I read it and was like, oh, eh. But then card number 11 had exactly the right words. As soon as I read them, I was like, oh my God, those are the words that I've been struggling to find. That's the concept that I've been struggling to articulate. And here is a lovely example to springboard off of. Incredible, right? I got the impulse to draw a card. I got a card and I could have been like, this card is stupid. This card doesn't even apply. What the fuck? But the next card did and it did it perfectly. So switching from how can I make more money? How can I get more clients? to how can I ask better questions? How can I see the answers all around me more clearly, more often? How can I trust the universe enough to follow the weird impulse to go on a baking spree? How can I listen better? How can I get more in my body? How can I feel the pulse that is a divinely inspired impulse to act versus the nagging hammer in my head that says, work, 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 harder, harder, harder. (laughs) Even though no results come of that. And in fact, it makes things worse. And yet still, I'll be like, well, if I just worked a little harder, things might be better. Which is complete and utter garbage. When I follow the impulse to draw a card and go on to the next card, because that one didn't fit, I follow the impulse to take a stupid spoon carving class, to bake a big bunch of cookies and cakes and whatnot, things flow. You got an impulse to declutter your junk drawer? Follow it. You get an impulse to go through and give away half your clothes? Do it. You're sitting around worried about how you're going to make rent January 1st and you get an impulse to clean out your car and detail it with a toothbrush and Q-tips and a vacuum, you know, a shop vac. Those things don't make logical sense, but our mind, our minds are idiots. Our minds couldn't figure their way out of a paper bag. We've proved that. We have proven that over and over, haven't we? Maybe it's time to give that up. Maybe it's time to say, hey, these weird impulses to clean my car out are better use of my time than trying and struggling so hard to write a Facebook ad. It's the energy that needs to move. It's not the tactic that needs to change. It's not the skill set of marketing or sales or any of that. It's the skill set of following the energy that's missing. It's the faith to stay the course when the messages don't make sense that's required if the currency is changing from the currency of a dollar bill to the currency of a well-rested, aligned, centered human being that's anchored and radiating from the heart. You don't need another business course. You need a course in paying attention to your own business and following the messages that are delivered all the time, all the freaking time. They're all around you. I really thought I had a handle on this and I didn't. When I started asking on a daily basis and tracking every little sign I got, we're drowning in information. 
they're throwing information at us constantly. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's the third hawk I've seen today. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's like, hey, pay attention. Oh, they missed it. Send another hawk. Hey, pay attention. Oh, they missed it again. All right, send another hawk down. She missed the first two. Oh, she just missed the third one. All right, send a blue jay. See if that'll work. <laughs> you know, they're not up there get, or around us getting mad that we are dismissing the repetitive pattern of hawks or blue jays or, you know, whatever. They just are like, okay, send another one, send another one, send another one. She's still asking the question. Send another, send another, send another. Stop asking what you can do. Start asking to hear better, to see better, to feel better. Stop asking for more clients and ask for more embodiment. Stop asking for more money and ask for more consciousness, more awareness, more attunement. All you have to say is help me. Help me see the signs. <laughs> Help me see the signs. Help me receive the information. Change me into one who can see what God is showing me all the time. Change me into one who is awake and aware and willing to step out in faith and follow the instructions, even if it's Take some toothbrushes and Q-tips and go detail your car. Go get in your shitty closet and empty it out. Go buy some gluten-free baking mix and start cooking. Okay, you see? Not efforting to make money Focus on well-being to make money. Focus on listening. We're being told how to survive these tumultuous, turbulent days. The trees are telling us. Team Invisible is calling us. We are not alone in the turmoil. I keep thinking of the character Amos on The Expanse where he's like, Welcome to the churn. We're all getting churned up. It's best just to embrace the suck. But we don't have to just embrace the suck. Because we have an enormous amount of energy around us telling us, hey, here's how you get through the churn. Here's how you embrace the suck and make it paradise. All we got to do is listen. Okay. Shift what you're asking for and ask to see differently. Ask to feel differently. Ask to have a different interactive experience with your own team invisible. All right, last days to sign up for From Wounded to Wise, which is going to go into this deep human design zone that will really open you up to hearing. I get it. It's a long commitment. It's, uh, you know, it's actually not that much money, but I know that it is also that much money. So if you miss it this round, I'll, I'm sure I'll do it again next year, not in 2020, I, I'm only doing one, but 2021, I'll probably do it again. But there's other things on the website, other ways to work with me that are potentially more budget friendly, but let's get on board. Okay. We're being told how to thrive in this. We don't have to suffer like we've been. All right. Think less, feel more. You know where to find me. That Michelle Wolf.com. Two L's, two F's. Talk to you next time.